Um, Citizen Access TV. Okay. Um, there were three lion kittens that were rescued within the last two weeks, and in contrast to what happened here, mm -hmm. um, these were actually found. Um, these were actually taken to the wildlife investigation lab and are being kept alive. Mm -hmm. um, so we just thought people might be interested because it happened. We just found out about it ourselves. Great. I'm Great. really curious. So the lion cubs that you get, how many of them are released and certain for five? Do you have a number? Um, they don't do um, rehab and, and restoration. The only place they do that is in Florida. Okay. But this allows us now to work towards that. Okay, so, so what does happen to cubs? So what will probably happen with these three cubs is they'll go to um, a zoo yeah. or an animal, uh, wild animal sanctuary. Um, my personal hope is that they'll go to the open zoo. Uh, and um, they've been, the open zoo has been pulling together a group of um, nonprofits who are working together to do the implementation part of SB 132, which is actually um, takes the um, skills that are necessary to do lion response and um, sets up a response team that can be called upon by wardens or local law enforcement. So they will have the ability to tranquilize communications, um, outreach to neighbors, um, not all the pieces that you wouldn't expect the average warden to be carrying around with them when they unexpectedly run into a lion. So, um, but we're just really happy to see that um, this, this new method, this yeah, new way is actually... I mean, I, I personally am just curious about that, about the cub thing. In Florida, do you know how much success they've had with releasing cubs back into the You know, I do not, but uh, I tell you that our biologist Amy does. So let me grab her first. Okay. I'm sorry, um, your name was? I'm Dan. Dan. Um, this is Amy, um, and they had some questions about the success of rehabbing and releasing cubs in places like Florida. Okay. So, yeah, that, that's, it's really a personal interest, but uh, sure. do you know how successful they've been with it? I know there's that, uh, so, so it was like a while ago, I think, up in Alberta, no, no, they no. released a cub and they had a couple of them. Um, so they've done about a dozen in Florida, a dozen facilities there because they're endangered in Florida. Um, and most of the boys kind of have a hard time, but boys in the wild have a hard time there because they're just out of habitat and for each other. Um, but they're typically doing well, they're staying out of trouble, they're not, you know, attacking livestock and people, there's no competition with other characters or rodents that get out and out. Um, but they're having luck with, I mean, cubs at about six months. Or older to bring them into captivity. They're pretty much isolated from people. Make sure they can hunt deer and wild things and other natural prey. Yeah, how do you teach a cub to hunt? Uh, yeah, it takes a lot. Say anything younger than six months, they're saying it's really difficult. Oh, it's yeah. so dependent. They're most likely to be captivity But the older ones, you know, about six months. Well, thank you very much. Your name again? Amy. Amy. Very Glad nice to meet you. You have a good day. Thanks. Thank thanks for coming out. You guys have any other questions? Or? No, that was great. Yeah, Appreciate I have, you. I just have a quick question. So they, they have a program or they don't have a program yet on what to do when they actually tranquilize them? And so here in California? Yeah. Um, if it's an adult or a teenage lion, they have the capabilities to tranquilize, move the cat, release it, and they have vets and things if it just needs a quick checkup. But if you're bringing in a cub whose mother died that would still need its mother for another six months to a year, we don't have that in place yet. But we do have the expertise here in California and people who are ready and willing to do it. We just don't have all of that written out yet. And how territorial are they? Would, you know, are they found in the same area after relocation? 
like how many miles do you have to take them away for them to not come back to where they used to roaming around, right? Sure. So typically the ones that we see wandering into town are the teenagers. They're about two years old. They've just been kicked out of their nest, oh, okay. you know, kicked out of their home range with their mother and are looking for their own space. So if you pick up that cat and you move it, he's just going to keep moving. He was oh. looking for a new home anyway. He's not really going to go back. Amy, you're a really good spokesperson.